Welcome to Front Row. Top news in the Virgin Islands is told only by us here at JTV on this edition of Front Row. A recent move by Green VI as they seek to move at a faster pace in covering new grounds. Commissioner of Police Mark Collins says the community must join in the battle of ridding the streets of illegal guns. And you'll hear of how internal battles with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is not stopping one police officer from advocating for police welfare. The details when we return. We know that where you choose to bank matters. And it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official Bank of Paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early but with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. Okay. Hi, I'm Cowboy. And I'm running for stake pre no, no, president of stake. Thank you. And I will meet your needs. Some bathrooms are so expensive to build, they come with security. But at Staycation Butchers, our meats are affordable. People always ask me, Cowboy, where does your salmon come from? Well, our salmon comes from the water. I vote for Cowboy. It's a vote for quality, integrity, and consistency. So come into Staycation Butchers and cast your vote for me, your next president of steak. Alexandra Durant approves this message. No, I don't. Welcome back for the details of the news on the front row today. Green VI has taken on board two persons with expertise to help the organization move at a faster pace in covering new grounds that's designed to take them closer to making a greater positive impact here in the, the Virgin Islands. Green VI has appointed Mrs. Sharon Flax Brutus and Mr. Edward Charles to its board of directors. According to a press release dated May 29, 2023, Sharon Flax Brutus brings a wealth of experience and expertise to the Green VI board. With an impressive background in sustainable tourism and destination marketing, Mrs. Flax Brutus has played a pivotal role in promoting responsible BVI tourism practices, says Green VI. Additionally, Green VI says our extensive knowledge of the industry and the commitment to environmental stewardship make her a valuable addition to their leadership. On the other hand, Mr. Edward Charles is well known for his dedication 
to environmental advocacy through the professional and community engagement. He joins the Green VI's board with a passion for sustainability and a proven track record in driving positive change. Green VI sees his expertise in eco-conscious development and a strong network within the local community as factors that will greatly contribute to their mission. Others on the board are Vanessa King, Felicia Swap, Dylan Penn, Henry Cricky, and Charlotte McDivitt. Commissioner of Police Mark Collins continues to stress the urgent need for community involvement in ridding the streets of illegal weapons. This, he says, is important even while the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force continues to do its part in the battle. According to Collins, quote, we are all at risk of injury or death in these premeditated acts of violence. Do not keep the secret of these perpetrators. If they fear exposure, they will stop. Help us to restore a sense of calm and peace in our community." End quote. This call by the Commission of Police came on the heels of two most recent shooting incidents, which occurred in the territory on May 27 and 28, with the former claiming the life of a 33-year-old Major Bay resident Vicardo Farrell and the latter, leaving one nurse in gunshot wounds in the Dr. D. Orlando Smith Hospital. Collins also referenced the matter which had led to four firearms, including two semi-automatic weapons, being seized in a search of a residence at the Spooner Estate recently. The week prior, another firearm was confiscated from an 18-year-old scooter rider. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force says it is continuing to do its part to reduce the number of illegal firearms on the streets of the territory and is appealing to persons with information on suspected persons or the location where these firearms are being held to share same with them. The Royal Virgin Islands Police Force assured that this can be done confidentially by calling 1284-800-8477 or 368 -9339. Member of His Majesty's Loyal Opposition and the District 3 Representative Honorable Julian Fraser R.A. is of the opinion that there should be a visa-free travel for, Guyana, for Guyanese into the Virgin Islands. I also want to leave these words with you. And you can take them as far as you wish. But several years ago, some form of review was done. A criteria that was used, I don't know, but it must exist. It's still there. But that review that was done several years ago and the criteria that was used that caused the Virgin Islands government to impose a visa regime on people from Guyana coming to the Virgin Islands should be revisited. And I leave it with you to take that up with the, the authorities in the Virgin Islands. This position was on the grounds of the extent of the population of Guyanese resident in the Virgin Islands, according to Honorable Fraser. I had never thought, I had never given the amount of attention to the size of the Guyanese community in the Virgin Islands. I remember back 60 years ago when Paulin came to Tortola to work on our roads. I think that's when the Guyanese community start building. And I am so happy that today, when I look at them, they have become a part of the Virgin Islands. At the time of pushing this, Guyana was observing its 57th year of independence. And according to Honorable Fraser, Guyanese residents in the Virgin Islands should make their celebration an annual feature here. Today, the 26th of May, the Guyanese community would come together normally to celebrate their independence. Something which I think that I admire Guyana for. 57 years ago, they saw fit to move towards independence and never look back. It is something that we can learn from here in the Virgin Islands. The road they took, the courage it, they had to do it, and move forward ourselves towards that end. I want Guyana and the people of Guyana to know that I admire them immensely for that courage, the independence of the people. There is nothing that can convince me that today where we stand here in the Virgin Islands, that we don't have the wherewithal, 
as far as our development is concerned, as far as our intellect as a people is concerned, to be where they were 57 years ago. I would like for this not to be the last time that they come here because I hope there will be no more tragedies, yes, as far as the one that took place with the, the um, 19 lives that were lost. I hope there will be no more that would bring them here, but that they would come here for independent celebration. And I would like to be invited each time that you come here to celebrate your independence until we get ours, at least. I want to learn from you. And I want you to teach our people. I want you to teach our people that there's absolutely nothing wrong and everything right about independence. Honorable Fraser was at the time giving remarks at the light up the night the vigil held in the Cyril B. Romney Tertola Pier Park when hundreds gathered in a show of solidarity with the 19 lives that were lost as a result of a fire which flattened the girls' dorm in Guyana. His Majesty King Charles III has sent his message of condolence to the people of Guyana and the British High Commissioner in Guyana in her message said, our thoughts and prayers are with the people of Guyana during this most difficult time. And we extend a hand of compassion and support to all those affected by this tragedy. I extend to you on behalf of the government and people of the Virgin Islands, most sincere condolences as we mourn the, lo the tragic loss of life of these 19 precious individuals. I must say to you as well that I reached out personally uh, to President Ali and conveyed our collective condolence from the Virgin Islands. And I followed that with a letter that I sent um, to President Ali. Also, just a couple days ago, we had a, a meeting of um, CARICOM, a virtual meeting of the Council of Ministers. And I conveyed to the Foreign Minister there as well our collective condolence. By extension of the Guyanese community in the Virgin Islands, this incident will touch lives, homes, families, and cultures for generations to come. But you have taught us to stay humble, stay peaceful, rest assured that your word and your glory and your direction, even through time of hurt, sorrow, and pain. That as the people will come out on the other side stronger, more loved, well endured, and a renewed spirit to serve you in the best way we know how. Words fail me when I contemplate and reflect on the sad and tragic event of 18 young girls and one boy perishing. When I reflect on the pain and the suffering, words fail me. All I can do is to convey my very deep condolences to the families of the girls and boy that was lost in this tragic event. One thing that I recognize, that I realize, and I fully accept is that we are indeed one people. We feel the same things. We have the same type of blood going through our veins. And when we hurt, we hurt together. And when we Rejoice, we rejoice together. And I believe it is time that not just for a tragic incident, 
as this for these 19 young people. But I believe it is high time that we put aside all the division and all the divisive ideologies and thoughts and let us realize that we are indeed stronger together. I know the BVI Guyanese community are feeling the same grief as those persons in Guyana. Grief is never easy to deal with on our, on our own and I'll express to the Premier, Premier and the Cabinet and the Government, whatever assistance we could give to persons who are grieving and are going through this grieving period to give some level of comfort during this time. I know there are, there are hotlines in the, the, the HSA and other, other services that could assist persons who are grieving to give them someone to speak to during these very difficult times. To the government and people of Guyana, I pray you would find a sense of peace after having to experience such a terrible ordeal. Stay strong and be comforted in knowing that there are well-wishers around the world including us here in the Virgin Islands, praying for you. I'd like to say to you, members of the Guyanese community, that you too are a part of the British Virgin Islands family. You too are loved and respected, and just as you mourn, and as Jesus Christ himself directed, that we ought to rejoice when our brothers and sisters and members of our family rejoice and, and mourn when they mourn. I want to let you know that I personally, my family, and indeed persons from my district, we feel your pain and we are here with you. The death toll has since climbed to 20 as one of the critically burnt girls has died, 13-year-old Sharona Daniels. Our hearts go out to her family at this time. Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Sergeant of Police and Secretary of the Police Welfare Association, Mr. Sean A. McCall, is the new president of the Caribbean Federation of Police Welfare Association. Uh, first of all, um to be elected, one, you must be a member of your local association, which is your police force, police welfare association. Secondly, one of the other stipulations that your association must be in good financial standing, paying the membership dues, so that you could offer yourself for election. I must say, though, that I'm no stranger to the Caribbean Federation of Police Welfare Association. I've held an executive position for the past 10 years. I was, the I was first elected to the post of trustee. Then I went to the public relations officer. Then I was the first vice president. Then the vice president. Now I'm presently the newly elected president. The CFPWA, first of all, is an amalgamation of police welfare association. We tend to mirror what you call the Association of Caribbean Commissioners of Police. What we do, we work together, we collaborate our ideas and our issues and we take them forward to the commissioners and the heads of government or the relevant authority to bring some resolve to our members. Like presently in the Caribbean, there are officers who work 80, 90 hours per week. That is unheard of in 2023. And we intend to address that. Look at some of it is legislative. Some of it, we think that the commissioners with good negotiations could offer better working shift patterns for officers around the region. We don't think the police should be on the job that long because if you have a police officer who's tired and discomfort, discomforted, he can be a threat to the public, and we don't want that. What are some of the other major issues that you guys see as common around the Caribbean region? Oh, well, everybody thinks the police should be paid better. I, I certainly agree with that. The police is overworked and underpaid. We are doing uh, too many hours across the region. And when you look at us, we are the primary security of the nation. And the hours we work and the pay that we're given is not good enough. We, look at the police forces around the region. They are able to attract 
qualified young people, but because of the numeration packages, they are unable to maintain those young people. We are, normally, in a lot of police forces these days, you have a high turnover of young people. They are leaving the force more than they are joining the force because of the pay packages. And we want to address that, but you know, this is something for individual governments. But if we think, if we sit down and put heads together, we could approach each government collectively and see where we go from there. Okay, you said you would have been part of the association for quite a number of years. Uh, what, are, what are some of the things that you guys would have seen as success stories in representing the welfare of officers over the years? Oh, well, there was one time there was an impasse in Belize where um, there was a welfare elections and on the day of the elections, the commissioner changed the rules, which we thought was unfair. And the rules were changed so that a particular person couldn't hold office. We intervened, we wrote to the commissioner, we sought an audience with him to no avail. And we also did talk shows, we did interviews, and we reached out to other commissioners to hey, ask him, hey, reach out to this commissioner and see how we could best resolve this, this issue. And fortunately, we, we got some result from it, even though part of it has had to be resolved in the court, but at least we did our best in mitigating the circumstances. So we have done work like that. Um, also in St. Vincent, we had to go into St. Vincent to negotiate some issues with Commission of Police and member and the welfare head there when the welfare head was placed at the furthest island in the Grenadines that takes six hours by boat, only twice a week that boat is available. That is not good for welfare. How could you put the chairman who is tasked to lead the welfare of officers on the furthest point you could find in the Grenadines? That was unheard of. Whether it was political, we don't know. But we sent a team down and we negotiated with the commissioner and eventually he was brought back to the mainland. So these are some of the things we do for our officers. Have you seen any legislative changes or uh, positively impacted any legislation in any of the countries that you represent? Well, what normally happens when they're going through exercises like these, they reach out to us to see who has the best policies and legislations, and we tend to mirror them, even our present police act that we are going through now. Some, some things we put forward from a welfare standpoint was, was mirrored from other jurisdictions. Our welfare rules that we're trying to get passed as well was mirrored from other jurisdictions like Trinidad and St. Vincent that has very strong and long-standing welfare association. And we feel that we could bring these type of changes to other regions for the betterment of the officers. I know when persons would, have, would see this, uh, they would say, but isn't this officer uh, under some level of investigation? Uh, yeah. Is he still on the job? How can he serve uh, mm -hmm. uh, in such a position while under investigation? Right, without going into any details of the, the issue, what I can say, I'm still a serving member of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force. I am a paying member of the Police Welfare Association. I have not been charged with any criminal offenses, and that gives me the opportunity to serve my officers. The issue came up in the conference, and I made it clear my position, and, and I, I maintain that my integrity is still intact. The association met for the 11th annual general meeting in St. Lucia from May 24 through 26, 2023. That will do it for this edition of Front Row. Top news in the Virgin Islands is told only by us here at JTV. Remember to continue to follow us on our social media platforms as well as on our website at jaffixtelevision.com. I'm Kathy Richards. Thank you so much for joining us. We know that where you choose to bank matters, and it is your vote on what your funds do in strengthening our community. As your official bank of paradise, we invest and support the lifeblood of our economy by helping in the realization of personal goals for homeownership, education, and entrepreneurial visions, which support small businesses. We make it our place to connect with persons and worthy causes, 
and we have been doing so for more than 30 years. Where your money goes and what your dollars empower are your choice. And we thank you for choosing us, a bank that gives where it matters the most, for you, for our community, and a happier tomorrow. The National Bank of the Virgin Islands. Everyone looks to the future, but no one truly knows what the future holds. The number of people under the age of 20 with type 2 diabetes could increase by 49% by 2050. Let it be known that we all have a 30% chance of developing hypertension. Globally, more than 300 million people of all ages suffer from depression. More than 60,000 young adults aged 20 to 39 are diagnosed with cancer each year. Obesity leads to problems such as stroke, heart disease, and kidney failure. No matter your race, age, or color, we are all at risk. These diseases can be managed or prevented if caught early. But with the right medicine and the right doctors to keep us on a path to live a robust and healthy life. We will live well. Hi, I'm Cowboy, and I'm running for steak pre no, no, president's of steak. Thank you. And I will meet your needs. Some bathrooms are so expensive to build, they come with security. But at Staycation Butchers, our meats are affordable. People always ask me, Cowboy, where does your salmon come from? Well, our salmon comes from the Wata. I vote for Cowboy. It's a vote for quality, integrity, and consistency. So come into Staycation Butchers and cast your vote for me, your next president of steak. Alexandra Durant approves this message. No, I don't. Plug into Digicel Plus and get even more entertainment with Disney Plus included. The best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and National Geographic all in one place. Whenever you want, plug into Plus to enjoy Disney Plus and much more with a home fiber bundle. Sign up today to Sell Plus.